Hi, welcome to another video. So today, we're looking at the newest Gemini CLI upgrades end-to-end, -end, starting from the older updates and moving up to the latest, and then I'll do a short demo section to show where you can find the main features inside the tool. The core value here is that Gemini CLI has gone from a simple chat in a terminal to a proper, scriptable developer assistant that can edit files, query cloud data, deploy apps, analyze security, and export structured output. Basically, what it does is bring an AI agent right into the places you already work. Your editor, your terminal, your CI, which is kind of cool. Now, let's talk upgrades from oldest to newest. But before proceeding, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-4.0, Claude 4 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. All in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, but what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. Now, back to the video. In the early wave, Zed integrated Gemini CLI as a third-party agent, so you can start a Gemini thread right in the agent panel, and it pulls local code context for reviews and refactors, which is quite awesome if you live in the editor. You can check out my specific video on this upgrade as well. A settings dialog arrived, so you can change behavior with a simple panel instead of digging through JSON, which is pretty good. Message queuing landed, so you can line up your next question while the model is still responding. There's a session stats view to track lines added and removed during a session. Really good after a heavy refactor. Custom commands got smarter with support for arguments and a fast no-prompt mode when you want speed. The MCP Foundation improved with better OAUTH for services like GitHub and automatic notices when your project route changes. Multi-line input became smoother with a quick terminal tweak. You can run headless edit flows where the assistant is allowed to make changes automatically. Powerful for CI, but you'll want guardrails. VS Code picked up a multi-workspace chooser so you don't accidentally edit the wrong repo. You can instantly clear the prompt and cancel responses cleanly. Small things that make daily use nicer. I mean, I liked it. Lots of quality of life wins. Then, the automation and polish phase kicked in. GitHub Actions matured so you can trigger Gemini-powered code reviews and issue triage during pull requests, which is pretty awesome for teams. You can easily set your key and pick a default model like Gemini 2.5 Pro for stronger analysis. Custom theming arrived, so you can load or define a visual theme, giving clearer cues for modes like Accept Edits versus Shell, which is kind of cool if you record content or share screens often. Telemetry got an HTTP exporter, so you can send traces to your observability stack without much fuss. There's a concept of allowed tools, so trusted operations don't keep nagging for confirmation, and you can bulk approve a whole chain of tool calls in one go, which is pretty good for workflows. System-wide defaults let orgs define a baseline configuration that users and workspaces can override. Editing text settings in the dialog is straightforward. A bug where model errors were hidden got fixed, so instruction following doesn't silently fail anymore. They also shared more MCP learning content and workshops, and I thought I'd talk about that as well, because it's useful for teams ramping up. Next came a bigger inflection point focused on deployment and security. Once you install the extensions, 
you can push your app to Google Cloud Run right from the CLI and run a security scan that flags vulnerable dependencies and suggests fixes, which is super cool for fast remediation loops. The edit engine got smarter and more structural. They adjusted the auto-continue behavior so the model doesn't keep talking to itself unless you want that. Prompt completion arrived, adding gentle suggestions as you type. The footer is customizable now. You can hide the current directory, model info, or context summary to keep the interface clean. Enterprise users get citations automatically, and you can enable them in general to see sources, which is quite awesome for traceability. There's a dialogue that helps handle daily quota limits if you're using pro-level models. Custom commands learned how to embed local files and directories directly into a prompt great for injecting docs. A lighter model option showed up for faster, cheaper runs, insanely good for bulk work. A bunch of flags moved into central settings for stability. You can save a session summary with detailed stats to a file keyboard behavior got more consistent across terminals, and there's a loading indicator while connecting to multiple MCP servers, so you get clear feedback at startup. Then we got tooling upgrades. A streamlined flow helps you quickly install and manage MCP servers. Think of it as a tool belt to add GitHub or a database server without manual gymnastics, which is quite awesome for multi-backend setups. Non-interactive usage got smoother with a way to run one-liner prompts and get immediate results, handy in shell pipelines. Tool output truncation showed up so long, logs don't flood your screen while full output still gets saved. The edit engine had more improvements for multi-file changes and cleaner diffs. You can add custom witty messages to the UI for fun, which is cosmetic but kind of cool. Nested git in your handling is respected, so fewer accidental inclusions. Admins can enforce a specific authentication type across the organization, which is pretty good for compliance. There's an agent to agent idea for developer tools in early stages. I really liked it and have been experimenting. That's why I thought to share it with you guys as well. Also, there's a public code lab to get hands-on quickly. Finally, the latest set brings higher ceilings and deeper data connectivity. If you're a Google AI Pro or AI Ultra subscriber, you get significantly higher quota limits for Gemini 2.5 in the CLI, which is insanely good if you batch a lot of jobs. There's a bundle of database and analytics extensions connecting you to AlloyDB, BigQuery, Cloud SQL for PostgreSQL, MySQL, and SQL Server, Dataplex for Governance, Firestore, Looker, Spanner, plus a toolbox for plugging in lots of data sources. Basically, it turns the CLI into a data concierge, which is quite awesome. There's a JSON output mode, so you can run headless and parse responses, stats, and errors cleanly. Keyboard-triggered fast modes now auto-approve pending confirmations making multi-step fixes move along quickly. You can export a chat to a markdown or JSON file, so sharing context in PRS becomes trivial. Prompt search lets you pull up past ideas quickly. Undo and redo in the input saves you when you accidentally wipe text. Loop detection now asks if you want to disable for the current session, giving you control without losing guardrails. Telemetry can go straight to Google Cloud for simpler setup. And the visual indicators for modes like Shell, Accept Edits, and YOLO are color-coded, so you always know what state you're in, which is pretty good for clarity. Now, let's jump into the demo. I'll keep this short and simple. In the editor world, the Z integration lives in the agent panel. You start a Gemini thread there, and you get code-aware assistance. In the terminal, the settings panel is available directly from the CLI, so you can toggle approvals, turn telemetry on or off, 
and adjust behavior without digging through files. Session stats are accessible as a view to see lines added and removed. Custom commands sit in the command list, where you'll see the ability to pass arguments and inject local files. For deployment and security, the cloud extensions add entries right in the tools menu for pushing to Cloud Run and running a security scan. The footer visibility options are in settings, where you can hide the current directory or model info for a cleaner look. The lighter model choice and central configuration are in the same settings area. The MCP server connections show up during startup with a loading indicator, so you can see exactly what's connecting. For data, the databases and BigQuery extensions appear as tools you can open to query or explore data sets. You'll also find chat export in the menu, where you can save your conversation to a file, and JSON output is a run option for headless use. Prompt search is tied to the input box, as are undo, redo, and the color-coded mode banners. Fast approvals via the keyboard are visible when you toggle into those quick modes. That's basically where everything lives, so you can turn features on and off without hunting around. So, quick pros and cons from using all this. The speed features, headless edits, skipping confirmations, fast approvals, are amazing for productivity. But you want guardrails, especially in production, sandboxed workspaces, enforced authentication, clear policies. The cloud extensions do need proper setup on Google Cloud. It's a bit of work, but once you've got it, the workflow is really good. Prompt completion can feel chatty in minimal terminals, so just turn it off if it bothers you. JSON output is excellent for pipelines, but schemas can evolve, so pin versions and test your scripts. And while quotas are higher for pro and ultra, if you're using free tiers, pace your usage and pick lighter models where that makes sense. I mean, I liked it. These are pragmatic trade-offs that keep the tool flexible without hiding the sharp edges. I really liked the direction here. Gemini CLI now feels like a cohesive platform. Editor integration, deployment, security checks, multi-file edits, data querying, telemetry, and shareable conversations. The setup overhead for cloudy bits is real, and you need to be thoughtful with approvals, but the velocity gains are hard to ignore. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.